actually talk to the plants. <laughs> I don't know if everybody does that, but um, every morning when I go out to my garden, I sing. I'll sing the garden song. I'll sing, oh, what a beautiful morning from some play or movie. Plant your rows straight and long. Temper them with prayer and song. You know, I just sing to the plants and I, I think they pick up on that. I really do. I guess if you put a meter on them and saw their vibrations, I think they'd be happy. I've been a musician since I was 13 years old and making a living at it since I was 17 and probably stopped about 10 years ago. But I mean, I still sing. I just don't perform anymore. It just comes out of me. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to get up in the morning. <laughs> it's like I look out the window and it's still dark and I say, darn, it's still dark. I can't get out there. <laughs> and if I could put floodlights in the fields, I'd probably be farming at nighttime too. <laughs> but uh, I just love it. It's just something in my bones. I don't know where it came from. I grew up in the city, uh, Camden, New Jersey. And at 10 years old, I declared I'm going to own a farm. And at 27 years old, I bought a farm. I think that when a, a young child has that much of an interest in something, it has to come from some other lifetime. Because it didn't come from my background. None of my family, none of my ancestors grew food or did any farming. And it was so strong in me. I mean, I knew at 10 years old I was going to own a farm. That's what I wanted to do. That week that I moved in here, I was like, hi. <laughs> It was like no drug, no anything could get you as high as I was that week. I was just like elated. I think I walked around in a daze just walking the land and saying, I finally own a farm. <laughs> and it's not real big. It's 13 acres. A lot of it is wooded. I'd say when I bought it, it was about a little less than half wooded. So I'd say six acres of woods and seven acres of open land. But through the years, if you don't mow, and this is something I learned, the trees start growing. So I'm now more than seven acres of trees and less land. Old crow watching hungrily from his perch in yonder tree. In my garden on a spree has that feathered I just love it. I love being in the country. I love listening to the birds as they just start in the first hours of the morning and the sun coming up over the trees. To me, I say, what's not to love? <laughs> I know a lot of people wouldn't like the hard work, but I really like it. I feel better when I'm out there digging and pushing mulch around and planting and doing all the things you do and getting hot and sweaty and I love it. I had been farming for 41 years, but not on any great scale, not on um, selling to the public or anything like that. It was just for ourselves and give vegetables to friends. But when the pandemic hit, it was like, okay, people need food. The supermarkets don't have a lot in stock. The shelves were empty. Let's do this. And in March of 2020, we just started going on this. Good time. We are made of skin and bone Feel the need to grow my own Cause the time is now at hand Rain, full rain, sun and rain So right now for winter, everything that I'm going to plant I think is in and it would be kale, Swiss chard, lettuce, spinach, 
um, arugula, uh, turnips. There's a lot of things you can grow in the winter. We have a tent frame that we saved because the tent fell apart and we just put a piece of plastic over it and now we have beautiful crops growing inside there. It's only a 10 by 10 area, but it certainly is enough to feed us through the winter. But even outdoors, without any protection, you could still grow kale all winter long. We mulch, uh, we do hay and leaf mulch. Um, when you till the soil, you disturb all the microorganisms. The earthworms might dry up and die. Um, everything is messed up when you till. I like to keep for the things we have on the property. We also have comfrey and that's an herb and the roots of the comfrey plant go 10 to 20 feet deep. It's a biodynamic accumulator. So the roots of that comfrey plant go deep into the earth and they're pulling up all these micro nutrients if you will and then when you lay those leaves on the surface or if you uh, ferment the leaves um, they'll fertilize the land. You got a whole pile of it. We're going to dry this for winter time. Comfrey is also called knit bone. It helps your bones knit together if you break them. Um, it helps if you sprain a bone. And it is also excellent for adding to your compost pile. Chicken manure is extremely helpful in fertilizing our land. We let it sit for probably a year before we use it, and then we're turning it back to the soil. Just keep layering hay and straw and compost and leaf mulch and manure and whatever we can find, we keep layering it like a lasagna. And it could be a foot, foot and a half high. And by spring, like right now it's November, but by spring, say May, this will all turn back to dirt. This hay will be all broken up and real nice and it'll fertilize the plant and it attracts the worms and the worms aerate the soil, their castings fertilize the soil. This will all compost up and be beautiful soil for spring. We'll be ready to plant. So between the chicken manure and the comfrey, we are fertilizing the land. Uh, we don't need to till. I, like, I have not tilled in 41 years and I have beautiful fluffy soil. So my partner, <laughs> here we are together <laughs> in our farm shirts. Well, you're kind of dressed up, I'm not. <laughs> and we're, of course, the AARP Farmers. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a song we sing. Oh, should we sing the song? Every day is Christmas Day. Every day is Christmas Day. Every day is Christmas Day. Here at Sunshine Farm.